Joining me now, David Frum, who's the senior editor at The Atlantic and also wrote for George W. Bush, and from Florida, that key swing state, the writer and commentator Joe Klein. Great to have you both here, David. I'm not sure how they let you out the country at a time like this. Uh, do you think that we are hours away now from uh, a Donald Trump nomination? Well, it, if Donald Trump were to lose Ohio, even if he does win Florida, the contest remains open. Obviously, he'll have a tremendous gust of wind at his back, uh, but it remains mathematically possible if he loses Ohio that he um, is halted short of an outright majority of the Republican delegates. And at the convention, anything can happen because the delegates who will be there will not want to nominate him if they can possibly avoid it. But isn't it odd that there isn't a, a second place candidate? You know, one week you thought it was Rubio, one week you think it might be Cruz. If there was a broken convention, the likelihood is it wouldn't necessarily be Cruz. It might be somebody completely different, right? right. Well, there is a, Ted Cruz is a second place candidate and a strong second place candidate, but you're right. Um, when pe people need to to understand this, when um, you see those numbers of delegates on the screens after a night, that doesn't refer to actual people. That refers to slots. That refers to, po to the power to appoint people. The actual delegates will be selected later, usually by state parties, and they're not necessarily beholden to Donald Trump. They are the people who make the party go, the local, the local activists and donors, and they will have different views about the future of the Republican Party from the less committed people, less committed Republicans, mm. who are casting their votes for Donald Trump. Joe Klein, we've talked a lot about, you know, the anger and the emotions in this whole election. How would you define the Trump voter? Well, uh, according to the polls, the, uh, the, the Trump voter is white, uh, less educated um, and angry. It's an anger that has been uh, fed, you know, for the last 10 or 20 years uh, from right wing talk radio, but also from left wing demagogues, as you, you know, as, as you uh, mentioned in the in the piece before we came on, uh, he is more moderate than the other Republican candidates. And there's an awful lot there that would appeal to Democrats. Uh, the part that appeals to conservative uh, working class voters is quite frankly the racial part, uh, the anger at Muslims, at Mexicans, and so on. You, you once called uh, Trump lizard-brained, uh, this idea of, you know, of his voter being... Uh... No, you have it wrong. Tell me. I, I said that Trump was, acting, Trump was acting out of his lizard brain. I'm sorry, I, I can uh, hear myself talking there. Um, I, I, I said that Trump was acting out of his lizard brain. Each of us has a lizard brain at the base of our, at the base of our skull uh, that, you know, that uh, controls reflexive actions like fight or flight, hunger, and so on. And he was not, he hasn't been dealing uh, uh, and appealing to people on the basis of thought or reason. He's been appealing to people on the basis of their fears, uh, the, uh, the emotions and re reactions that come out of their lizard brains. And David, one of the reasons I introduced you at the beginning is, as a speechwriter for George Bush is, in a sense, whatever candidate emerges is a product of the last one. If you think that Obama's yeah. a product of Bush, do you think that Trump is a product of... Obama is... No, Trump is a product of Bush. The Republican Party... I mean, I don't think Freudian psycho psychoanalysis is a good way to approach actual people with actual mental illnesses, but as a literary device, it's very powerful. The, the, those of your viewers who still remember or remember, uh, the, the Freudian th theory was that the patient suffered a trauma, the, pepper, the patient dealt with the trauma through repression, um, but the repressed always returns and expresses itself in hysterical behavior. So who's got the mental illness here? So in this case, this is the Republican Party. George, the Bush years were the trauma of the Republican Party. We have not been able to talk candidly to ourselves about what went right and what went wrong. So we have a set of formulaic responses. He kept us safe. Well, what do we mean and to what extent and how do we feel about Iraq and how do we feel about Katrina and how do we feel about Medicare Part D? There are a lot... Um, and there have been a stereotype short list of things you're allowed to say. Well, I like everything about George mm. W. Bush, except he spent too much at home. But you can't then say, well, why did that happen and how is the money spent? And so in, in the vacancy created by uh, this inability to talk, Jeb Bush had the bright idea, well, maybe the party is ready for another Bush, a third Bush. And this enormous pile of money was gathered, and this third and least articulate of all the Bushes stepped forward. And the result was catastrophe. And Trump has stepped into the post-apocalyptic, post-Jeb um, environment uh, with, uh, in which 
all the establishment mm. money and all the establishment strength was So this is a dissipated. failing, a direct failing of the Republican Party to get to grips with what had happened to it. Uh, look, uh, uh, Donald Trump, somebody as obviously fraudulent as Donald Trump, could not have a political career in a party that was well. This is not a well party, and that's why there's an opportunity for him. The interesting thing, Joe, perhaps, is we've got this extraordinary situation where a lot of voters don't like the candidate of their own party naturally. Do you think we're going to see a certain amount of cross-dressing here, the Democrats that can't bear Hillary and the Republicans that can't bear Trump? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Can I just say about, about David Frum that he, is, he, over the years, has been very courageous, one of the few Republicans who have been willing to speak the truth about the problems in that party. And right now I'd like to speak some truth about the po problems in the Democratic Party. These protesters, these left-wing protesters who are going to Trump rallies and causing this trouble are only strengthening Donald Trump. He is the master of disaster. As long as you know, the, the country seems chaotic and, ar and, and anarchic, he is going to benefit. I believe that no matter what the polls are showing right now, he has a very strong chance against Hillary Clinton next fall, which should terrify all of us. So your message to those protesters would be don't protest. Stay home. Go door to door, knock on doors and talk to people. Uh, be, you know, be, be positive, be creative. Uh, but, you know, every time you... I've been to these Trump rallies and the crowd loves it when, you know, you know some poor left winger starts screaming or what, and, and, is, and Trump right. says, get him out of here. Do you think we've reached um, the low point of this campaign or...? Oh, no. Right. No. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Not as long as Donald Trump is breathing. <laughs> Let me just bring David in, Joe. Uh, no, it's going to get lower. No, Joe, Joe's, Joe's point about the, staying home. Look, one, one of the sicknesses of American politics and one of the sicknesses that has enabled Trump is we've had this breakdown of institutions. And, and Joe's right. If you feel that the idea, this is a, a Facebook era, idea, that if you feel strongly about something, what you do is you go somewhere and you express your indignation. Um, if you feel strongly about something, Go get 25 of your friends registered to vote um, and uh, drive right. people to the polls. Um, raise money for the candidate of your choice. Those are pro-institutional okay. actions. But American politics is in, in a very anti-institutional phase. And what we do, every, one of the things that has enabled the Trumps is every time we say, what well, we have a reform, and all of our reforms are based on weakening and degrading our institutions to make it more impossible for parties not to do self-destructive things. I could go on for another three hours, I'm sure Thank you me. could. Thank you both very yeah. much indeed. Thanks. Thanks.